Let's do one more word with Robert H. Frank. He is in Ithaca, New York. He is a professor of economics at Cornell University and the author of The Darwin Economy, Liberty, Competition, and the Common Good. I want to pick up on a recurring theme that's in your work, including uh, your former book in 1995, The Winner Takes All Society, that decisions that are economically rational for individuals can make us collectively worse off. And in the Darwin economy, you've used evolution to pursue this argument. So tell us, explain the link between evolution and economics. Yeah, that was Charles Darwin's great insight. It, was, it wasn't important how big you are, how strong you are, how smart you are. What was really important was whether you were bigger, stronger, smarter than the people you were competing against or the animals you were competing against. Life's graded on the curve. And when we have people competing for scarce slots at the top of any rank ordering, there's virtually always an arms race as contestants jockey for position. Uh, and I think the invisible hand presumption that we inherit from Adam Smith, the idea that you can just turn individuals loose in unregulated markets and ask them to seek their own interest and always expect to get socially beneficial results once the dust settles, that's not really any longer a presumption once you start seeing the world through Darwin's lens. Actions that make sense for the individual don't often add up to a, a whole that we like uh, from the perspective of the group. Uh, one of the best examples in Darwin was the runaway arms race that led to the four-foot antlers in the modern bull elk. They weigh 40 pounds, they're four feet across. They're a horrible impediment to the animal if it's chased into the woods by wolves. It's done for, it's easily surrounded and killed. But Darwin knew that they were big uh, in, in that contest because if they weren't, then the animals would never have access to females. They were a polygynous species. The men took more than one mate if they could. They fought one another bitterly for access to females, and the antlers were their weaponry. If you had bigger ones than your rivals, you'd be more likely to win. Hmm. So you got uh, a, a result there that was not so great for bull elk as a group, but uh, essential for bull elk as individuals. But you suggest in a way that uh, Charles Darwin, the naturalist, is a smarter economist than Adam Smith, the economist. Well, I think if you look at what governments around the world do, uh, the vast majority of all the activity when it comes to taxation, regulation, laws, uh, any kind of intervention at the collective level, it's almost every bit of it explained by an attempt to reconcile the conflict between individual interests and group interests. We pass a law that says your child has to start kindergarten uh, if he turns age six by December of, of a given year. Why do we need to regulate that? Well, the, the, the simple answer is that if we leave that decision up to individual parents, each might say, well, if I hold him back a year, he'll be bigger, stronger, more intelligent. Uh, he'll do better in school every year and be more likely to go on to have a successful career. But other parents can do that same thing. And then we've got seven-year-old kindergartners, then eight-year-old kindergartners. That's not a productive process for society as a whole. And so we, by convention, take that decision out of individual parents' hands and make it collectively. You've given us a lot to think about in terms of individuals versus the collective. Uh, Professor Frank, it's good of you to join us from Ithaca. Thanks so much. A pleasure. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.